What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the internet famous internet show. I'm your host, Devilor. There's a lot of gaming news to talk about tonight. This is definitely the very first time that we've attempted to start this episode. I guarantee it, there, there were no technical difficulties at all. Very first time we've ever tried to start episode 7 of Internet Famous. And honestly, there's so much gaming news to talk about tonight that I'm not sure we'll get to it all. Uh, but first, I need to introduce my co-host, the Richard Hammond to my James May, which is a joke I have not made before, I promise. <laughs> Everybody, it is Mr. Mike B, aka aka Mike B. How you doing, dude? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> first try. First try. Got it on the first go. First try. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. And of course, uh, every week we have a special guest. Joining us tonight is someone whose name you will certainly recognize. Especially if you've been, uh, you know, hanging around here watching our streams for a while, you will certainly have come across our uh, special guest for this week. Easily the uh, the Jeremy Clarkson of the three of us, and he's got the best webcam. You're gonna love it, ladies and gentlemen. Shizzle. Hi. Hello and welcome to the Grand Tour. This week we'll be uh, <laughs> talking about <laughs> Oculus, <laughs> technical difficulties, <laughs> OBS, and Zencaster. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's been. If you couldn't tell, we're being sarcastic about how many times we've attempted to record this episode. Uh, there have certainly been some issues, but we've worked through them. Uh, and now it's time to get a uh, get a show going, which I am super happy about. Yeah. Um, so the first topic that we're actually going to be discussing this week, um, Oculus Rift having their own technical difficulties. It's been, it's been a major, <laughs> major problem. Um, yeah. we, were, we were talking about this in attempt number one, um, but I think it's still worth uh, repeating for attempt number two, especially for the, uh, the, the, the actual version of this show, the one that goes up on YouTube. Uh, so basically, they had a software certificate, which uh, expired, which is <laughs> a bad thing. So a software certificate is, uh, it's, basically, it's basically what tells your operating system that, yes, this software is okay. This is not malware. This is good software that you should actually allow to run on your computer. And it gives it, like, permissions to access different parts of your hardware um, and so on and so forth. <laughs> I'm sorry. Olivia just said that we have to be nicer about Oculus now <laughs> because of all the technical difficulties we've been having. That's we true. Zucked. That's true. That's what it was. We got zucked. <laughs> we got zucked. We got straight up zucked. Um, but what happened, what was funny about this, uh, this specific issue that Oculus had is that they, they lost their software certificate, which is, it's just a basic level of someone forgot to submit it for renewal sort of thing. I mean, it's, it, I imagine it's probably more complicated than that. Otherwise this issue probably wouldn't have happened, but, um, yeah, it, it meant that their software expired, which meant that their software wouldn't run, which also meant that you couldn't update it. <laughs> so you couldn't get the new software certificate once they you know, actually got the new one approved and everything. You couldn't get that one. So it was what? It was like a day and a half that if you had an Oculus, it just didn't work. It was just a brick. Well, technically still. Technically and still, yeah. Te technically forever until the next time you pick up your Rift. If you own a Rift and you were good on the 6, uh, and then let's say you fire it up you once every six months, like some people probably do, uh, it won't work then. So technically that timeline is now six months <laughs> so that it didn't work. Uh, yeah. So until they go and re-download or download the uh, the new certificate, uh, then it's it's just, you know, it's it's doesn't it doesn't work, which has got to be just uh, extraordinarily confusing uh, and just frustrating for, you know, people forever. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and then the new cert certificate, I don't know, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, the new certificate is actually not signed either. Oh. It has an ex <laughs> expiry date, has an expiry date of uh, 2020. Uh, and yeah, so today's fix, they said, download the new cert and uh, here's $15 you could spend on the Ocu on Oculus Home to buy whatever game you want. So if you want to make another $15, just buy a headset and then wait until 2020 when the cert expires again. Uh, you just made $15. It's like a rebate. It just takes yeah. a couple years to actually redeem. So it's great. <laughs> uh, rebate? I'm all on board of VR now, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, that's, yeah, I hadn't considered. So um, 
this was the only for anyone watching the VOD. This is the only topic that we actually discussed in the first attempt at this show. And we just kind of gave up halfway through because everything kind of fell apart because of the tech issues we were having. And I'm actually really glad that we came back to this topic again, that we didn't just strike it from the show because we're actually hitting on a lot of things that we didn't get the first time around. Like the fact that now if you have an Oculus Rift, right, if you say you're somebody who picked one up a while ago, you haven't really been paying attention to VR, but in another year or so from now, like something's going to come out on VR that you're like, oh man, yeah, I really want to play, I don't know, Final Fantasy 7 VR because they're going to find, I know they're going to find another <laughs> seven ways to release way. that game. Um, <laughs> Like, okay, we're going to come out with Final Fantasy VR. Ooh, that's right. I've got that rift that's been gathering dust. What's going to happen is you're going to go and you're going to try to use it and it's just going to fail. And you're not going to have any idea why. So yeah. there are a lot of rifts out there right now that will never work again. And yeah, most people will probably go, okay, yeah, uh, I, I need to look up on the internet and find out why my Oculus isn't working. Because I feel like the majority of the people that own an Oculus are the more tech savvy people right now. It's just kind of a pain to actually get working. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of people aren't. A lot of people are just going to be like, huh, well, my rift that I have doesn't work anymore. It must have broken. Oh, well, like, I don't know. They'll, they'll like, because <laughs> they'll I take mean, it back. They'll, they'll take it back or they'll try to if it's still in warranty. Or well, actually, I tell you, I'm sorry, I tell you, just to strike that real quick. I. Uh, if they buy a new one, then they will have reinstalled. They will install fresh software, so they actually wouldn't experience the issue. That's true. The issue would be they, they but they are going to get warranty calls for people that don't know what the hell's wrong with the software. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's still a real thing. Yeah, and I, I guess um, Jagerx in chat is saying that Oculus sent an email to everyone. Do you know how many emails I get in a day? And I, I I'm pretty good about not getting spam too. Like I get very low amounts of spam, and I still get like a hundred emails in a day and it's like yeah. i'm, and, and I'm it's gonna to the miss registered something email like too it's to the registered email so yeah. it's like if somebody just uses you know whatever at hotmail or something like it's like this sent it to my yeah. junk and that's it yeah you know what this actually reminds me of it reminds me of the issue shizzle that you were having with your uh cronus max when you were trying to get into oh, destiny man, 2 right oh god yeah it tried to break itself because it's like oh <laughs> you haven't used this in a while you, you download new software uh, I don't know if this is actually <laughs> legit Cronus Max anymore. You should pay us some money. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, ransomware. And as as you learned in that experience, because like what happens in uh, in another couple years when there's some other software update or something to the to the Rift that then it doesn't want to download because you have a pre this software certificate <clears throat> version of the Rift. So like they come out with Oculus Rift 4.0 or something software. And for whatever reason, that doesn't work with if you've never updated it, but it's all, got all this fancy. Oh, my God. This is I think this is the sort of issue that Oculus is just going to have ripple effects of for ages. It's certainly going to push a lot more people that are currently on the fence about VR away from buying an Oculus yeah. Rift. Like, oh, aren't those the ones that just randomly stop working? Like, that's the sort of press they're going to get out of this as a sort of word of mouth, I guess, that they're going to get out of this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But it's yeah, concerning. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really, I wasn't leaning either way or the other about VR because I'm still on the whole, there needs to be actually useful and really amazing games for me to even bother thinking about buying a, you know, multi hundred dollar headset. But I was like, yeah, you know, I know about enough about both of them, especially with the upgraded, uh, was it the Vive, like 1.5 or Vive Pro, I guess is what they call it. Hmm. Uh, and now I'm definitely leaning more Vive now. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know about the way yeah. about getting bricks. It's like uh, I know Steam's not going anywhere. Facebook mm, might drop it. Yeah. I tell you, I I actually we got a lot more other stuff that we want to get to at some point, but I actually kind of think that these uh, I'm I'm excited about. I need to actually try this on stream some at some point. But I got myself a uh, uh, what's it called? The, the Windows. Yeah, the the Windows Mixed Reality headset a while ago. Yeah. And what's super cool about these is that they use basically HoloLens technology. You can kind of see if I if I come over here, it has two cameras on the front of it that just sort of face forward. So rather yeah. than having to set up cameras around your room, you just it just watches the room sort of move around you and uses motion yeah. tracking to do it. And this was only 200 bucks and it came with the controllers as well. So like are they like hand controllers? Yeah. Yeah. Uh I just threw one of them on the floor, but there, there's like this. It has like a little ring of lights, and the the cameras on the, uh, um, on the headset look at the little yeah. ring of lights. 
Please and, see the ring. Huh. Yeah. Have you tried it yet in any particular software? Yes. So I tried it in uh, Subnautica. It didn't work. Um, oh. They so the um the Steam VR it's the Steam VR integration is the only hitch with it right now because mm-hmm. it uh, um uh it basically it launches the Windows Mixed Reality version of the software and then you go through that version of the software to launch Steam VR and there's like mm-hmm. this weird plugin that you have to install and everything um and that's still in beta. Um, okay. Valve and Microsoft are directly working on making that work, so I, I'm confident it will eventually work fairly well. Um, but yeah, it does work in VR chat. I did test it briefly in VR chat. Ooh. So at some point, at some point, I need to stop pretending to be a police officer on the internet for ten minutes and actually try it out in in pretend, VR. Pretend to be happens. a police officer in VR. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. And then Shizzle, um, you gotta get on board. Just uh, yeah. choose something that's not a rift, obviously. Five pro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it'll work, probably, unless you know Steam fucks up their certificate next week. So I mean, if that happens, then trust in Gabe. I'm never. I mean, <laughs> hey, we'll see. We'll see. We will see. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next topic uh, because this, this uh, so this topic is actually like four topics. Um, Every battle Roya- battle royale game decided to do something in the past like week and a half. <laughs> it's like everyone's just been taking turns, like trying to one up each other. Um, so the first thing that happened is actually so okay. For a while, there's been um, at first there was well, first there was like the battle royale mod for Arma. But then like there was H one Z one, and that was the first like battle royale mode that really started to take off um, as a consumer product because it, it, it didn't require you to basically figure out how to run mods in arma um then there was player unknown battlegrounds and that was like okay now we have the battle royale game that h1z1 kind of wanted it to be and they were sort of clashing for a little while PUBG ended up clearly winning over h1z1 and then fortnite came out so we ended up with this weird mixture of like PUBG for like the super tactical realistic finger quotes version mm-hmm. of battle royale Fortnite for the crazy ridiculous I'm going to launch a rocket so that my friend can jump on it and ride it toward my enemies (laughs) and then build himself a little fort when he lands and kill them from that Um, and so H1Z1 was kind of left in this weird spot where they like they don't really have a niche anymore Fortnite sort of took over the wacky zany like Mario Kart sort of version of the game and PUBG was taking the like more pseudo realistic version of the game, and so H1Z1 was like, you know what, cars, <laughs> let's just stick everyone in cars, and you can drive around. And it's actually, it's actually pretty cool. I was watching um, uh, Milton Pike uh, play it for a little bit, Milton T. Pike play it for a bit uh, with Sheriff Eli, and it looks pretty good. It actually looks like something that I want to jump in and check out. Like you're just sort of driving cars around. You shoot crates to open them. You pick stuff up from the crates. Stuff oh that you God, pick up crazy. goes into the inventory of your car. You pull stuff from the inventory of the car to your own inventory. And it's four people, one person driving, three people just shooting everything that's around. You can, can like you swap that out. Can you like have I'm somebody sure. out, of, out of the driver's seat? I wonder. I'm not sure. Have you played it yet, Shizzle? I haven't. Uh, I, that would require me stopping playing all the other new stuff that's out right now. Uh, <laughs> that is current <laughs> issue. Uh, uh, yeah, I plan to get to it eventually because it looks really good like some twisted metal basically yeah stuff. exactly yeah um it's not quite what i want uh having tasted the uh vehicular chases that PUBG creates those are amazing but this will definitely fill the void i think that uh, i have and probably a lot of other people have for the vehicular br type style combat for quite a while um it looks great man like i got super excited when i saw it and uh then i watched somebody stream it immediately after i saw the announcement and Man, it just looks like a lot of good shenanigans. You got NOS, you got like giant springs for the cars so you can go over crap, not to mention the giant jumps everywhere. Jumps yeah. they put on the map to get on top of like skyscrapers. It looks just like a good time. It does. It looks like some some wacky, crazy stuff. Cause like like you said, yeah, there's even like there's like oil slicks, like there's mines you can drop on the ground and stuff. Um it's it hey, looks it's straight nuts. up twisted metal. It yeah. is, yeah. It's it's twisted metal battle royale. Four four player squads. That's genius. Yeah, it looks it looks really fun. I'm gonna have to check that I wonder, out. I wonder how many people are like us though. Where it's like, wow, that looks really great. 
but I have all this other stuff that I'm playing right now. I can't really get to it. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, so moving on from that, PUBG actually announced, uh, I think it was just today, announced their 2018, uh, yeah, it was just today, announced their 2018 roadmap, talking a lot about some of the, the stuff that they're working on over the next few months. Um, I don't know how much of this was in response to, uh, wait, hang on. Is this actually, oh my God. Okay. So a, I've just discovered something hilarious. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. But <clears throat> anyway, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna point this out right now. So this is the blog that they have about yeah. this. There were images here. These images are oh, broken. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought that was me. I thought that was me. I was like, oh yeah, the image is like broke. So <clears throat> I did what a lot of people will do. Uh, well, at least what I would always do is I right clicked on it and did open image and new tab. The image that it, the place that it tries to go to. Tell me it's like C colon slash. No, it's Imgur. They hosted on their own blog. Uh -huh. They hosted all their images on Imgur. And I'm sure <laughs> what happened. I'm positive that what happened is Imgur went actually. Hosting your commercial use of our of our images on Imgur is against our terms of service, and they just took down the album or something. I don't know if Player Unknown Battlegrounds has realized this yet. Oh my god! Like this, these are literally <clears throat> these are all Imgur links. This is someone that's just like just in charge of like just communications. They're just like, all right, well, we gotta get these things up. Well, I could use this crazy just hack together shitty image upload system that one of my devs put together overnight that doesn't even work half the time or i can just put it on imgur and so it's like uh, i could see why they would have done it but wow that's pretty funny that is really funny yeah so anyway um actually talking about what they're doing um <clears throat> I, I guess kind of the uh the three biggest things that they're talking about well there's actually several big things well i'll just sort of go down the list here uh, the first thing that they have in their their dev blog, uh, which I'd love to be able to show you guys the image of, uh, unfortunately, Imgur. <laughs> um, the header image. You got that. The header. <laughs> you have a header. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, Olivia pointing out, Imgur does actually have a rate limit. I would have assumed that Imgur's rate mm -hmm. limit is pretty high, but I guess for a player unknown battlegrounds blog, it's probably going to be still low enough that they probably just hit the point where Imgur just automatically shut it down. Yeah. Um, Plus, well, unless they probably have permissions for Reddit to do it, because I'll say Reddit would cook that constantly. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, but anyway, um, so they're doing a, a four by four kilometer island map, and four by four kilometers. So the the main, the original map is something like what? It's like twenty by twenty or something like that. It's no, pretty big. It's probably more like eight by eight, I think. Maybe more like eight by eight, eight, eight okay. that, but still, it's a considerable size decrease. Yeah, it's going to be a lot smaller, which is great for the way that like. Oh, well, at least like Shizzle, you and I tend to play PUBG. Mike, I think launched PUBG once. <laughs> that hasn't looked what? at it since. What? <laughs> no. Fuck you guys. Hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna to right you now. Haven't played right now. 1.0 man. You haven't even played <laughs> that. Okay. That, that was that in months. December. I have 177 hours in it. All right. Oh, that's cool. Let me pull up my steam real fast here. Well, oh of course, of course. Anyways, yeah, the point yeah. Lower is trying to get to is that people who have been playing it for a while, uh, who probably mm -hmm. aren't uh, uh, as entertained by the normal play style of drop really far out, uh, you know, slowly get your loot, move yeah. into the circle, kill people occasionally, or just get shot out of nowhere because it's a you know one of those BR type games you can get shot from anywhere. It gets a bit stale. So what Laura and I tend to do and the people we roll with, we basically just hot drop on the busiest location we can get anywhere on either, you know, the school on the original map or Hacienda on the, the second map because they're both yeah. the hottest places typically where the plane drops over. So you can get a ton yeah. of action in the beginning. And if you die, whatever, you had some some good shenanigans, either died panicking for a gun or you went on a killing spree <laughs> and then died. Uh, or you actually yeah. managed to live through it. And then you've already got some action for the rest of the match. So you're, you, if you die after that, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, the basically. They're going to be giving us a concentrated map. It's going to be great. Yeah, I'm excited mm -hmm. for this. It basically it's gonna be means. like school, like over and over again. The yeah. whole map should ideally be like school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because they, they say, like, I saw some people on, um, on Twitter, I think, who were talking about, oh, so it must be like a 50 person version of the map or something it's like no i don't think so no, i, think I it's really hope be they're gonna put all hundred yeah because in the uh dev blog they talk about how it's more for uh it'll have higher player density and right now the player density yeah. for the maps are pretty low 
So if they keep it at the 100 uh, person limit, if you actually, well, if the images worked, uh, you could see there's only, <laughs> from what I could tell, like five or six actual really big little villages slash towns to drop on. So uh, as opposed to the 20 plus and a normal flight path of uh, Erangel or um, Miramar, like that's pretty big. So you can have probably 10 to 15, if not more people at every location. I'm just guessing off the top of my head. It's a new map, which sounds like a lot of fun. I got it. I yeah, got the, the, it. I found a I found a mirror of the of the map. Oh, so here we can take a look yeah. at it. Yeah, the, look the at that. All, I don't see any facilities other than like a, maybe a village in the bottom left island altogether. Yeah, it's it's yeah. four by four, which is a quarter of the size of the real of the the, the regular map. Oh, it's sixteen uh, by the 16 original normal. map or eight by uh, eight normally. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's. I mean, if you think about it, it's it's going to be a quarter of the actual size, right? Like a one quarter of that. Um, yeah. And also, a lot of that is water. <laughs> like, yeah. there's a yeah. solid chunk of that that's just water. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 a hundred people. It's the same amount of people in a quarter of the space. So that sounds like I think Shizai said to you. I said that sounds like team deathmatch, uh, where it's basically <laughs> you get in, you're just constantly yeah. just constantly going ham. That's perfect because yeah, like I said, like I've got six hundred and one hours in the game. I only go for the hot spots because I that's want that on. action because I just I don't want to walk around for 20 minutes to get to the end circle just to either get shot or get like maybe one or two kills. I want to go ham at the yeah. beginning and if I make it through, sweet. If I don't, hey, next round, do it all over again. So a whole map yeah. potentially of just that is right up my alley. Yeah, it just basically removes the chance of you, that, that sort of play style removes the chance of you having a game where you loot for 45 minutes and then get sniped out of nowhere and die because you know you're not going to just start off the game by looting for 45 minutes. Except on the rare occasions where no one goes school, which is always weird. But yeah. <laughs> you um, land a school and it's just like nobody's there. It's, it's happened. It's always weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we're always um, paranoid until we leave. Exactly. Yeah. That zone happens and it's just bad. Yeah. Um, they're adding an emote system. They had a really interesting GIF. I'm going to see if I can find a mirror of that. Um, you know, emote system when before I Destiny 2. Sorry, I just had to say it. <laughs> <laughs> You know when 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 I saw that and yeah, there's that gif uh, of him doing something, but uh, I actually had it. I hadn't realized that it was not in PUBG. Like if you if you asked me if it was in it, I would say uh, no, no, it's not in it. But it, I didn't realize that it was missing. I should say, right? Does that make sense? Where it's like if you look at uh, look at uh, Fortnite, right? Every clip you see from it, when they get a kill, they do like some kind of fucking dance or whatever. Or Overwatch, where it's like a tag and a dance or something, trying to get in the highlight reel. Uh, you know, you just it's like, oh yeah, it's there. It's that's funny, right? You don't really expect it to be where it's not. Like I don't, I don't play, uh, I, I don't, I don't play a uh, 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 Vermintide and be like, hey, where's my emote system? Like it just, it just doesn't click there. But uh, it, with with PUBG, it's like, wait a minute, that's something that. That's that sh that that should be there. Absolutely. Like there's so much you could do with that. Uh, so much sass, <laughs> so much attitude you could throw around uh, with that. And even fucking uh, DayZ has uh, an emote system, a, a relatively basic emote system, but it, it works. Yeah, I found uh, so Polygon fortunately decides to host their own images <laughs> rather than putting them on Imgur. <laughs> Maybe the uh, <laughs> official uh, roadmap will just link to theirs now. Yeah. <laughs> So here's a an example. You can see sort of like the emote wheel popping up, and it's like that's a lot of emotes in them. I'm happy about the number of emotes in that wheel. Like a lot of times you, you'll see a game, and it's only like two or three emotes in the wheel. Yeah, and hands up, point, yeah. salute, or it's like uh, fucking it's it. <laughs> Destiny, where it's like okay, you can customize one emote, right? And the other three, here's four hundred of them, but you can customize one. Ah <laughs> oh, man, that I'm still salty about that. Um, but don't so worry, the other thing eventually adding. for Destiny 2, I'm just saying. Not for PUBG, though. Sure, yeah. <laughs> we'll fix it in yeah. Destiny 3. I'm sure, also, by the way, I'm sure that when they roll out this emote system, there are going to be things that you get in the crates, and it's going to spark this whole uh, loot box drama right back up again. Oh, uh, my God. They've already, it's gonna they already be... confirmed in the blog post they're adding um, not just uh, gun skin, they're also adding, I think, vehicle skins? Oh, uh, good. Good. So yeah, yeah, yeah they, for, they're already they're already talking about adding more like in that in that roadmap post. <laughs> when yeah. you say when you say they're gonna be in the crates, I was like, 
What? I was thinking like there's gonna be a drop and you're gonna go out there and be like, wait, what, what's over there? Oh, it's like it's like a 15x and also a salute emote. <laughs> so, oh man, oh, great. I got salute guys. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I got people out of this. Yeah. Not quite the same. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff in this thing. The other, the only other thing that I think is really uh, interesting. Well, one thing that's interesting that's funny to call out is they said esports, and they said we're not there yet, but we will be. I was really hoping that they were gonna say esports ready in here somewhere, but um, <laughs> no. <laughs> even, even player known is in on the meme. Yeah. He's been cited <laughs> multiple times in many other uh, PUBG streams saying, huh, "Lol, esports ready!" Like during a competition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say, like. I enjoy the uh, the sort of character of player unknown, like the fact that like obviously he's the developer, he's the Brendan Green, the lead developer and everything. So like there's there's Brendan Green and then there's this sort of like weird extra like mystical player unknown persona that's sort of cropped up out of that that just goes around to people's streams and trolls them and shit. It's pretty funny. <laughs> um, but they're also adding they're they're talking a bit about um, the API and the uh, mods that they're working on. They are actually working on it. They're working on the um, developer API. Mm -hmm. um, and they're launching. They said this year they're launching the developer portal. Um, so yeah, that could be uh, that could be pretty interesting as well. I'm really looking forward to see what people end up coming up with um, and what the API actually allows developers to do in terms of adding things to PUBG. I like this limb and vehicle bullet penetration. I like that. <clears throat> That's something that makes a lot of sense, obviously. Uh, but I would love to see some of the replays that come out of that of people like chaining together, you know, knockdowns or something like that from like one bullet, like some crazy you know action movie type thing oh yeah with the like, slow-mo 3d people. replays there's gonna be a ton of collateral mm. you know quick shot videos but mm. i'm more interested to see how it's gonna play out like every time there's a vehicle rolls past us you and your squad are gonna open up on it and you're probably just gonna rip up the vehicle and it's just gonna pop you know all four of them dead mm. at once but it'll be interesting to see it'll probably still lower the vehicle health a fair bit maybe not as much anymore um but it'll be interesting to see how many people actually just kill outright in the vehicle through view, uh, the bullet penetration going through the, like the doors now and whatnot. Right. Yeah. This, yeah. To, this, is they, this is how they introduce uh, armored vehicles. <laughs> yeah. Just what we need in PUBG right now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so H1Z1 added their cars auto royale mode. PUBG announced like a whole bunch of shit they're adding today. And then Fortnite was apparently like, no guys, we want to, we want to announce stuff too. But their announcement is fucking weird. Well, it's actually not. They're announcing Battle Royale. Fortnite Battle Royale is coming to mobile. Like phones. Like they're these, doing these, these things. Yeah, those tiny things. Yeah, those. Uh -huh. um, and this is bizarre. It's actually going to have cross play. Between PlayStation 4. PC, Mac, iOS, and eventually Android. So you're going to be... So here's the thing about this. That, that game already exists. They, there are actually a couple of different... Uh, the, the, the biggest one is called... Um, uh, what is it called? I've got it on my phone right now. I'll pull it up. Um, there's, it, it's a, um, a it's, clone. It's a PUBG ripoff, you said, right? Yeah, it's, it's PUBG. a PUBG ripoff yeah. um, called Rules of Survival that actually has a PC client as well. Um, so you can play it on PC, but you can also play it on mobile. And it actually plays fairly well on mobile. The first time I played it, I came in second place. So obviously that's because I'm amazing and also the game is good. Um, and not because the game is crap and all I had to do was hide and run and eventually win. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It's interesting. Like, I, I don't know why... Especially, especially for a game that already has an established, like the the uh, rules of survival game. At least, like it's primarily a phone game. And in fact, to even log into the PC version of the game, you literally have to scan a QR code with your phone using the phone version of the game, which is janky. But like that, that gives you a, like it's a it's a game that is primarily designed to be played on the phone. Its audience is primarily on the phone. The only way to play this game on your PC is to also have it on your phone. Whereas Fortnite is obviously like right now it's entirely PC or at least like I guess it's on Mac as well but like PC and uh, and Mac, so you're gonna be on well, your on your also phone. Actually has, it's on also on consoles too. That's true. Yeah, it's on uh, on PS4 as well, um, and Xbox One. Yeah, um, but so you're gonna be going into 
I don't know, man. It's it's weird. Like it's already weird <laughs> to have cross play between console and PC. I mean, you get your you get your character progression over onto mobile. So it's like on one hand, it's like it's like okay, that's cool. I could you know, get on and do whatever I want on my character. Like it's not wasted time in that respect. On the other hand, like there's there's like this thing you do when you play a Mario Kart online where you basically spam, I'm using tilt controls. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> because it's so janky, right? It's yeah. like, I'm using tilt controls. And I feel like this is that. Like, I'm playing on the phone. Her, her. And then you get like first place or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it sounds strange. I mean, it sounds strange at first. I feel like the crossplay because it's like, oh, we're playing with all these, all these idiots on phone. It's like, well, that just should be technically easier for you to kill i guess if that's the case yeah um i don't know man i feel like I, I i feel like it's a good idea i'm not a fan of Fortnite, right uh but uh but it's I, it sounds like an awesome idea i mean i would love to be able to i don't know play world of warcraft on my phone or something like that without mm-hmm. having to jank it up with like screen sharing you know like that kind of stuff would be great or diablo maybe mm-hmm. um but yeah it's 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 smart move yeah, it's and, and just to be clear, um, because I see some some discussion about it in the chat, um, they're very clear what they mean by crossplay. They said specifically, this means players across devices can squad up with friends and play together. So they don't mean crossplay in the sense of just like, well, you can play and you can get queued into a you know, when you actually queue into a game, you're only other, uh, with other people that are on mobile or whatever, but you get cross progression. Now they say crossplay and cross progression, and they specifically call out. People with people who are on a phone playing alongside people who are on a PC playing alongside people who are on console. Um, it's Chilly, you uh, play you've played some Fortnite, right? Uh, I did like a handful of matches of the BR. It wasn't really for me. I played mostly the actual uh, co-op survival aspect. Hmm. Mm. Uh, does it with the building aspect? Do you feel like it? Because I, I mean, I get, obviously I play lots of shooters. Uh, on my phone and that works fine right but with the building aspect with like i'm sure there's i haven't played it so it's like i'm sure it's like it's menus gonna be and dang, I think. it's gonna be so okay yeah. much. i mean they might be able to pull it off um but man like i've watched there's a lot of people i watched who have transitioned over to be a uh, fortnite or at least add it into their streaming rotation mm-hmm. and <laughs> Besides the goofy clips with where you see like the emotes or them writing you know our rpg into the sunset like when you watch these people play at, at at least an okay or higher level of BR, sure, their shootings, like, you know, this shooting skills going to be decent. But yeah. the way they can just whip up a tower like that is a little silly. Yeah. Like, they just they'll yeah. Sit yeah. They'll spin in a circle and spam Q, and suddenly there's a whole box around them. I don't know. <laughs> the phone people are going to have a hard time competing with that kind of stuff. Um, and on top yeah. of that, just building, right. even at a casual pace on the phone, I feel like it's going to be a little wonky. I guess yeah. we'll see how that works out. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Yeah, like the correct way to play Fortnite BR, uh, as an example, one of your teammates gets downed. The correct thing on Fortnite to do, and everyone does this, and it does take some amount of skill, but the correct thing to do is run up to your downed friend and real quick build an entire box around them, then pick them up, then build a door in the box so that you can leave. Like that's that's what people do. You, you watch people like um, like Ninja play and he'll do that any every single time his friend gets down, build a box around them, then pick them up, then build a door and leave. How are you going to do that on a phone? <laughs> how, the, how the fuck am I going to be able, even on like console? I mean, like obviously people can already play on there, but you just like. Eh. Yeah, you're eh. limited by your turn speed. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. It seems like I mean. It's going to be great for PC players because all of a sudden your games are going to get a lot easier. <laughs> As if they weren't already easy enough from what I've been watching. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So that one, that one's a little bit weird. I'm, I'm interested to try it. I probably will finally try out Fortnite Battle Royale once it's on, uh, on the phone. Um, I've been looking at it from time to time. It just, I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't really appeal to me, but hey, on a phone, I'll, I'll give it a try. See what happens. Probably get my yeah. ass beat and then uninstall it. And install the <laughs> PUBG clone on your phone. Oh, that's already there. <laughs> that's yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. He's already got rank. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm the Grims of the, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Um, in other news, other games that have come out, uh, actually just, uh, just launched today. Vermintide 2 finally launched, um, for really reels. Have you, have you guys played it? Yeah. You, you, I know you were playing it earlier, right, Mike? 
Yeah, I, I played it all day. Mm. Um, it's, I mean, it's the so. I mean, what I played so far of the beta, the second beta was great. Uh, and the uh, at one point, I would just basically adds to it. Um, they added uh, they added a bunch of new maps, and we've we've been kind of working through and just trying to like unlock them all and everything. Uh, the they made a couple like tweaks to like just the characters, I guess like some of the some of the characters in terms of stats and whatnot. But my character play is fine. Um, <clears throat> it is it is actually just, and I feel like there's just a number of games that come out recently that are like this. Uh, and it's awesome. And we were talking about on a stream. It was like, what what is this genre? Because we could compare it to like we're like, oh, it's like Left 4 Dead. It's like yeah, it's like Left 4 Dead. You know, it's like here you have a series of maps. Uh, and the encounters themselves are kind of randomized, right? Uh, yeah. And it's like, okay, what well, well, Left 4 Dead like kind of sounds dumb, right? <laughs> and then it's like, well, isn't Warframe kind of like the same thing? It's like, it kind of is, actually. It's like, it is a, co- a co-op PvE focus uh, procedural where you go and you have a, basically a, a, a different, slightly different experience every time you play, whatever. Um, anyways, but yeah, like the... They have the gameplay that the combat feels so fucking good. Uh, I play mostly melee, so I don't know how the range feels, but like as, as melee, like it feels fucking phenomenal. Um, the uh, the way it scales now is a little bit better. Like the casual mode, I forget, I forget what it's called, like the, the, the basically the beginner mode is uh, is a little bit easier, which is great because it was it was pretty difficult, I think, to begin with. Um, and then it scales really nicely. So now we're playing in the second tier of the four. One of them they added just recent with 1.0 is like legend mode or something like that, which is probably completely fucking ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like it's it's just challenging enough. And then, of course, when you're in an actual match itself, if you haven't played it when you're in a ma- in 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 the uh, encounter itself. You actually have there's ways that you can actually increase the difficulty to add to your reward at the end by picking up these things called grimoires. You have to find them first, which is kind of a pain in the ass, right? If you don't know where they're at. Uh, and then usually when you see them, it's like, oh, there it is. I have to do this crazy <laughs> Guild Wars 2 jump puzzle in order to get there, right? Um, but yeah, it's 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 a way that you can scale the difficulty. So you can play on casual mode and then scale the difficulty up where you're where every time you pick up a grimoire, you get two of them. Uh, it'll drop you down to uh, 33% health. And then what I'm hearing from other people is that there are some modes or something somehow where you can pick up like five of them. And that means that you have fucking no health. <laughs> it's gotta be insane. But yeah, and overall the game is great. Like the loot issues that I have with the first one seem pretty much fixed, uh, with the way that the crafting system works, you could take a grind out old things and you're always getting shit. Uh, and then you can grind them down and then like repurpose them into whatever other gear you have by upgrading them. Like it's good, man. Yeah, it's it's really fun. It is. I mean, it is basically as uh, Mr. Roo said in chat. It's like fantasy left for dead, but I'm fine with that. I'm 100% fine with that. It's yeah, fun. I didn't like left for dead. Like, I, well, I, I didn't like left for dead because I only played it on uh, well, because of the play on Xbox. And I was like, it's fucking dope playing. We can't do this on Xbox. Um, but uh, but no, like this is it's 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 good. Like, yeah, it, it's a left for dead like, I guess. Yeah. Chisel, what is it called? What's the genre? Okay, fine now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good genre name um mm. oh, Vermintide like 2 the latest <laughs> fuck if I know fuck if I know yeah uh, uh, a left like I, <laughs> left I don't know left-like. but uh I'm definitely looking forward to hitting it up uh after the stream here because I haven't yeah. hit it up with the uh, actual release yet but yeah, yeah. no it, it had a lot different initial game I think only logged 14 hours ish in and it was not bad at all the combat felt pretty good then as well but it had um, it didn't have multiple classes for each character and the loot felt really random. It's like, oh, mm. great. I got I got a, I got a blue, but it's for a class I don't play now. Yeah. Everything you get, even if it's for one of the classes uh, that for your character that you don't play, it's still you're not going to get loot for other characters. And they have a, a what seems, at least in my opinion, a much uh, vaster array of available weapons as well, both melee and ranged. And it's just. I don't know. It seems like they fixed a lot of the problems of the previous game because I was enjoying the fuck out of the beta and I just decided, yeah. you know, I'm going to put it down and wait for the actual release so I don't burn myself out right now. Yeah, That's exactly. Smart. The The progression system has dramatically improved from the first Vermintide. The first Vermintide was really fun. It just sort of had, for me at least, it had the same issue that Left 4 Dead had, which is you sort of play it for a little while. And this is kind of like a, an overall, overall like gaming industry problem, I guess, is nowadays... If your game doesn't have a good progression mechanic to it, I don't care how fun the actual experience of playing it is. 
Now, I've, I've now been trained to feel like I'm wasting my time if I'm playing a game just because it's fun, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, yeah. um, I remember, um, like, uh, remember when we were playing Ravaged for a while? That game was really, really fun. It was a lot like, um, it was a lot like Battlefield, but unlike yeah. Battlefield, it didn't have any character progression. So I would play it for a little while, and I'd be like, okay, this was fun. I don't, I'm not getting anything out of this. I'm, I'm not being rewarded for doing well in these, in these games. So now I'm not interested anymore. It's, it's, it's almost a, it's almost sad in a, in a really big yeah. way. Like I can't play a game that's fun just because it's fun anymore. I need to, I need to be progressing in it somehow. Well, yeah. that's pr problem is I think is that you didn't get good. I believe with the uh, oh, <laughs> right. yeah, uh, no, but uh, you're 100 percent right. Um, it does feel like a lot like that with a lot of games these days. Um, where you're playing, it's just like this was cool, but you're sitting there like tapping your fingers, like, well, uh, that's it, huh? That's it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's something definitely that, love that. It's something that comes up a lot. Um, at work, even like people will one one of the common complaints about something is this is fun, but the rewards aren't very good. So I don't want to mm -hmm. do it. Um, so yeah. Speaking yeah. of games with major issues in the first time around, but hopefully will be better the second time around. Um, the Division Two was announced earlier today. Earlier today, in being developed. Yep. Apparently today was just the day for the gaming industry <laughs> to be like, here's news. everything. Here's like, <laughs> we don't even have any of the Nintendo Switch announcement in here. Like, they announced Smash for the Switch. It's not even in my list. I wasn't even going to mention it, but like, it's just everything has been happening today. Mm -hmm. We'll end up talking about that at some point, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, Division 2 in development. And <laughs> here's why I'm like, I'm like sitting here going, okay, did, did I miss something somewhere? Was today the day that everyone needed to announce something? Because... The Division 2's announcement isn't even an announcement. They were just saying, yeah, hey, we're working on it. Yeah, the tweet was even, the tweet from uh, uh, Ubisoft was just, see you at E3. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure like, that was, was like, okay. <laughs> pretty sure that was a bit premature. Um, I think it's more a combination of a couple things. I remember seeing an article either the end of last week or the beginning of this week that sh showed like 20 to 25 something jobs um, at. Uh, Ubisoft, uh, whatever branch uh, makes the division, uh, they saw a bunch of job openings for them. And then you have the rumor, I think, that cropped up today, a very, very strong rumor. That I think at that point, Ubisoft just jumped on. It's like, yeah, sure, we'll just confirm it, I guess. I'm not sure they actually planned yeah. on revealing it today. Yeah, that, that does make sense, because oftentimes before you're really ready to talk about your game, you do need to be able to hire people to make the game. So um, I know a lot of companies will just put up the job postings and they'll just be like, yeah, people are going to see that and they're going to know that we're working on it but they won't actually confirm it. I guess Ubisoft was just like, let's just tell everyone, yep, we're working on it, and uh, and see what happens. Um, but that does mean that we know basically nothing about Division 2. What are you guys' sort of expectations? What are you, what are you hoping for out of the Division 2? Anti-cheat day one? Woohoo! <laughs> oh, man. That's probably oh. at the top of everyone who played the first game's list. Yeah. Man, the first game had so much potential. Like they they developed this amazing engine snowdrop and it just it ran beautifully from day one. Even the beta, it looked great. You crank that stuff yeah. to max and it's just snow everywhere. Like the snow in that game just looks so damn good. It has mm -hmm. the proper crunch. It's got like you can walk up against a car and bash it and the snow will slide down the window like it's <laughs> it's so damn good and they had a really solid shooter they had a really fun story experience all the way up to 30 and sure they had some end game issues the first time through when you actually hit 30 but a lot for me and a lot of people you know it was about the dark zone and going in there and getting just your pvp shenanigans because it was yeah not quite you know uh full loot like a uh, daisy or any of those survival games but you still got your progression as well as your PvP fix and taking other people's stuff and making them mad, you know? Like it was a nice mix of a loot 'em shoot 'em slash MMO slash RPG and your survival game. Uh and they just screwed the pooch royally right yeah. out the gate from the first game when they just like, oh hey, you know all these uh, anti cheat problems in the beta? Don't worry, guys, we'll fix them. <laughs> oh wait, no, we're not going to fuck that shit. It's yeah, like I remember that. They were uh, like, it's it's so disappointing because they took forever before they even actually started even banning people. And even then, it was only two weeks at a time before they even yeah. started banning people completely. It's yeah. just like, that's my biggest concern with the game. Uh, I know that since then, 
they've you know locked that down and they've also done a ton of work with the post um dlc patches where they put in a ton of extra content and um scalability of the like the world so there's like world tiers and all that good stuff they've done a ton of good work but the problem is a lot of people like me are too burnt to go back because the biggest thing i wanted from the game was the dark zone and that's just they they've spoiled that for me so i mm. really hope because I talked about this in my Discord about four or five months ago. I said, I would love a Des- uh, Division 2. It's, I hope it happens, because at this point, I'm not willing to give the current one another chance. Like, I went back in with uh, 1.8, uh, whenever it came out, like, around Christmas to try it, and mm-hmm. it was just, it wasn't doing it for me. And I knew I wasn't going to go in the Dark Zone, because I don't trust that. So yeah. I just hope, whatever they do for this one, that they at least start off on a good foot. Hmm. Yeah, because like the, I I mean the issues because you you were mentioning that there were all these uh, these issues with cheaters in the beta, and it was literally like the the issues were so like core and fundamental to how the game was developed because it was just basic things like someone was just editing packets to basically say, hmm, yeah I I've decided that when I fire my weapon, instead of sending the packet that says I'm firing my weapon, I'm going to instead send a packet that said I fired my weapon 50 times, and the server just believed everything the client had to say, which is a great way to turn your game into a pile of shit. Um, so, and that, that's the sort of thing that's like, when none of your um, back end is server side, when it's all client side like that, there's not much you can do. Like they were saying in beta, oh yeah, we'll, we'll have anti-cheat in for release, and everyone was like, what are you, what could you possibly release is like a month away. What could you possibly yeah. implement in that Plug amount of time? In. Yeah. <laughs> Tell my guy work on it real quick. We got it. Da, 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 da. Yeah. It was yeah. so fun though. Like the roll the the few amounts of times that we were able to roll around in the in the dark zone and actually just go around looting, getting into the PvP shenanigans and not immediately get cheesed on by someone who's uh, editing packets or whatever. Like it's really, really fun. It was a, a really enjoyable, enjoyable gameplay type. So yeah, I'm I'm really hopeful for Division Two. I hope that they have learned that lesson. And yeah, honestly, they could just re-release the original Division, but with anti-cheat, and I'd probably be into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the the initial uh, beta PvP was probably some of the best, and maybe an initial launch before the cheaters started coming out full force. Yeah. But uh, I remember, like, we got a full four group, and then we started inviting other people from our list and, like, having them zone in and out of the checkpoints so we could try and get two groups together. Oh, yeah. Like, it was just... That's right. Yeah, man. And the, the atmosphere of that game in the Dark Zone was so amazing, plus the soundtrack and the sounds, like, yeah, and the, the distance was those, super good. Those mm. verbal, the shots, like, echoing down the streets was just so good. I just... If they could just... As long as they keep that together, honestly, and just fix the anti-cheat and keep uh, a solid new story experience i'll be happy um hell if they want to make it really happy they could just convert all of division one into the dark zone uh and in, in the division two the that'd map, be really good. Mean? yeah the whole yeah thing. that'd be crazy that's what i would love to see up the player Warhammer. count like quadruple it or maybe times five you know whatever and just yeah. the I whole first map dark zone yeah. now uh because of story reasons why not and then the second one doesn't do all the new story yeah. Like it'd be perfect, uh, or turn it into the survival mode. Uh, and I'm, I don't think Mike, you played, uh, you played a little bit of it with me, didn't you? Yeah, we played a little bit of it, but not, not honestly, not enough for me to like really retain any of it. it uh, man, that survival mode was. I mean, I remember if they actually if, they, if it had enough people in it all the time that uh-huh. I could constantly queue with a full group of four, I'd play that over PUBG any day. It was so much fun. The atmosphere and like looting from nothing and slowly getting your upgrades versus the AI and like ha- and having the blizzards you can't see people yeah, the blizzards, and still yeah. having your PvP and taking all of their loot because that's what that mode was. Oh man, that was so good. I just <laughs> honestly <laughs> the survival mode came out, but if they just marketed just that mode to some people, they could probably get away with it too. Olivia said, "This is how we get idealistic expectations for games that haven't launched. <laughs> it's because we're sitting here fantasizing about, oh man, if we do this and we do this, it would be great. It's like, just let us have this, Olivia. Just let us have yeah. it. Well, that's the, pretend. She, she has a really, really good point, though, and that's why it's part of why I was a little bit weirded out by their decide to announce that they're developing it without giving anything that resembles details because one thing I can speak with 100% confidence about is that when you tell someone that you're working on something but don't tell them what the thing you're working on is they just assume they they, they sort of like come up just exactly what we're doing right now just sort of sit They'll back and think you. about yeah you're like oh yeah so what I now imagine this to be is this thing over here 
And then when what you actually built ends up being two degrees to the left of that, it's just a disappointment rather than being excited about what the thing you actually built is. Um, so this is, I'm excited they're working on the division too, but the fact that they're already talking about it makes me worried. <laughs> well, but really didn't give us any info, but do you really want them to tell us everything along the way? And then if something gets canned, you're going to end up with the no man scam type scenario. I oh, mean, man. Yeah, like the, where they tell you all this stuff, so much stuff in advance, and then it's like, oh, it's, uh, no, no, it's no, there. For, for sure. Yeah, that's why. I mean, straight up, this is why Blizzard tends to wait until we're pretty sure about things before we really start talking about it, um, because we we don't want to give people unrealistic expectations. Uh, and so the issue that I'm concerned with here is like we're gonna sit here and go, oh man, it's gonna be it's gonna be so great. They're gonna bring in anti cheat, and then what? ends up actually happening as a hypothetical example is they go actually we decided that anti-cheat is hard so we're getting rid of all the multiplayer aspects for the division two and instead we're just going to focus on the story campaign instead and it's going to be an episodic story campaign game and then like if they had come out and said we're making an episodic story mode campaign in this hypothetical example come out and said we're making an episodic story mode like basically a, a telltale version of the division <laughs> If they had said that from the start, that everyone would go, oh yeah, Telltale the Division. I guess the story was pretty good. Yeah, I'll check that out. But if they say it's Division Two, radio silence, and then that's the direction they end up going with, where they want to focus more on like the questing and the the story and the the open world sort of aspect of it, and less on the multiplayer, <laughs> then everyone's just going to be disappointed. I'm trying to think if there's ever a game that did that that had an initial release and then the second release was absolutely nothing like it. But there's, I guess there's Mario Zelda. versus Mario Brothers 2 and yeah. Zelda. Yeah, Zelda 1 and 2. Uh, there's Pearl Jam and then Pearl Jam Vitology. <laughs> it was like where they, they basically went from like a like a, like a heavy grunge alternative bed to, to like an <laughs> The Matrix bed. and the Matrix <laughs> Reloaded. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it's easy to come up with examples of like the first game was bad and then this or the first like they were the same general thing but then the second one was bad it's difficult yeah. to go uh, dragon age 2 is actually a really good example that sonata mm. just had in the chat where dragon age 1 and dragon age 2 were very different games they were both still technically rpgs but they just took such a different approach with it um and you talk to dragon age fans and dragon age fans are actually pretty split on dragon age versus dragon age 2 there are actually a i feel like most dragon age fans tend to prefer dragon age the original um mm. origins i guess it was called um, but there are a fair number of people that were really into Dragon Age 2, and they just don't like... They, they, this was something we saw pop up a lot when Dragon Age uh, Inquisition came out, where they mm -hmm. were like, mm, no, I like the Dragon Age 2 playstyle more. I was hoping they would stick with that. Um, and it's just because it was a different game. It was just a completely different game in, the, in that sense. So it does happen. Um, I hope that's not what's happening with The Division 2, but I guess in terms of managing expectations... I'm going to not get too hype about it until we actually know what they're fucking working on. <laughs> Division 2, Vehicle Battle Royale. Ha, 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 ha. And oh that'll my be God. It. All I want is some basic multi-cheat, man, okay? Like, just turn that <laughs> off, Mike. Right? Just get rid of oh. it. Get rid of the cheaters. I hate I'll you. Be because Why? I think you're on... I think you might be actually legitimately onto something right there. Dude. Battle Royale is like the hotness right now. Yeah. What if Division 2 turns the Dark Zone into a Battle Royale mode? I mean, that's what Survival Mode it, basically is, though, yeah, right? Yeah, kind, kind, kind of it. Well, uh, Survival is more persistent, right? It's more persistent. No. No, it, it's round-based. It, it starts, it, round it, goes, based, on, so it okay. goes on for maybe yeah, two hours. Right. Yeah, I it's guess. a lot longer. Yeah. But everyone starts with nothing, and you work your way up by looting stuff, killing the NPCs, yeah, right. uh, finding the stashes, and yeah. you work your way to the Dark Zone, yeah. and you... Uh, you get stuff and then you extract. It's, I mean, it's just it, technically multiple people could win the survival in the division by just go, getting to Dark Zone, getting the filter made, and then getting a flare out. And once you get the, the cure or whatever, All right? But so I went the wrong direction with this. So it's basically uh, Division Two, uh, the dating sim. That's what we need. <laughs> VR as well. Yeah, VR, VR dating sim. There Ugh. you go. Yeah. Ugh, that with that valid certificates. Valid certificates, okay. <laughs> With valid certificates. Yeah. You gotta have those, all right? <laughs> and Assassin's Creed tie-ins. And Cup Noodle tie-ins. 
anyway. Someone say cup noodle. You looking at my counter? I was slightly making my fun God. of Final Fantasy 15 with their oh, yeah, ridiculous tie-ins. Oh God. Did you guys see the what was the most recent one? The um well they did the Half Life the Half Life, the Half -Life one, yeah. Yeah. And then they've there was another Assassin's one. Creed one. And then they've done uh they've done so many. There's another one. Yeah, there's another Something one for Origin. I actually cut it. I had it in the in the doc. I'm gonna go back to our previous episode because it'll still be sitting in there in the previous document. Because <laughs> I I have to remember now what the what the their latest ridiculous tie-in was. Oh, it was the Sims Four. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Ridiculous. That's dumb. Because you know, every time I play my Final Fantasy, I wish I could have them looking like the Sims. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're they're nuts. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about on this episode, uh, which is exciting to me and I don't know, might be exciting to you guys is Pathfinder actually announced a second edition. So Pathfinder for the uninitiated is basically, they basically, they took D and D third edition and they looked at it and they said, okay, we can make this better. And they came out with a better version of D and D third edition where it was like, they, they took the rules that were there. And they just improved it, essentially. Now, that, that was like 10 years ago. Now they're basically saying, we're going to come out with a second edition of Pathfinder. And it's been long enough. There should be a second edition of Pathfinder. I'm actually pretty excited for this. Because it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting sort of like, the result of collaboration between multiple teams is... You come out with, uh, I don't know if they're going to base it off of an edition of D&D &D or not. It's actually funny. In the initial, in the announcement, they say Pathfinder was based on 3rd edition. They never say Dungeons and Dragons. They just keep calling it 3rd edition for <laughs> the entire thing. Um, but I don't know if they're going to base it off of like 5th edition D&D &D or if they're just going to come up with a whole new system or if they're going to just make it be an, an evolution of the existing Pathfinder. Now, is um, Pathfinder is 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 the core of it? Is it still like high fantasy? Like it's still yeah, kind yeah. of the same thing? Okay, it's so basically it's, still... it's like an alternate. So Pathfinder is multiple things. One of which is the rule set, which is what I was just talking about. Um, yeah. It's also a setting. So like D and D's default campaign is called Gray Gray Main, I think. Um, gray something. Gray Hook. Gray Scale. I don't know. Something gray like Main that. The wild thing. Yeah. I suppose um, it could be Gray Hawk. I think is what it is. Um, but then there's also like um, uh, Dragonlance is another setting. Yeah, Greyhawk. Um, Dragonlance, Dragonlance is another setting for basic D&D. &D. Pathfinder is a setting on top of that. Um, this, it's, they actually have done a whole bunch of pretty cool um, like community focused things with it, uh, with the setting. So like there are specific people who are called Pathfinder, like I, I forget the exact term. I was going to say Pathfinder heroes or something like that who are like officially approved DMs who are allowed to run campaigns that then tie into like this whole global like sync up leaderboard sort of thing. It's not really a leaderboard, but um, hmm. so you can say that, okay, my character is an official Pathfinder character. It's part of the official official Pathfinder overarching world. And I go to campaigns. I go to sessions that are run by people. I actually work with somebody um, who is one of the uh, official Pathfinder people. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. And you're like, okay, as long as I take my character to a to a session that's run by a person who's recognized as official by Pathfinder, then this is now a character that I'm allowed to take to any other one of these sessions and I can continue with it. And I'm just going to be like, hey, it's me. It's Bob the Mage. I'm going to show up and I'm going to be Bob the Mage and do Bob the Mage stuff <coughs> with this amazing staff that I got in this one session or another. Um, and you can just show up in someone else's group like that, um, which is kind of cool. It sort of makes like a weird... IRL MMO out of it in a way um, hmm. but what's really interesting is just the fact that they're they're coming out with a new I don't know I'm the the tabletop gamer of the group um, I recently got you guys into it obviously through Dungeons and Doubloons um, and I don't know I'm excited that's just why I wanted to talk about it because I'm excited I'm excited about I'm glad this. that you're excited yeah 
I don't actually really have much in the way of a topic on that. <laughs> I'm just excited about Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Uh, well, you said you'll explain what it is and why you guys should care. You haven't oh. explained the part where we should care. We should care. You should care because it's going to be fun, I think, probably. <laughs> oh. It is kind of interesting. Oh. One, of the, one of the interesting things that they're doing with it, which is a, a cool idea for, I don't know, sort of like... So they're basically, they're releasing something called Pathfinder Playtest, and it's not actually 2nd Edition. It's a playtest of second edition, and they're coming out with a bunch of these things for free um, as PDFs, or you can actually buy the books, and they, they say Pathfinder playtest on them. You can actually buy these playtest books, and they're specifically putting out this version of this tabletop game that mm -hmm. people can buy and play and do whatever they want with and give feedback on, so that when they actually release second edition, they'll have all of this feedback from all these different people that are actually buying and playing it. And it's an interesting well, idea a because map and everything, huh? Yeah, like it's it's actually really difficult for a tabletop game to get playtesting because you need to be able to get it to people. And so what they're doing is they're just releasing what they have basically and mm -hmm. saying this is only going to be temporary, like straight out of the gate. This is only going to be temporary. Um and so I I almost kind of wonder like are we going to end up in situations where there are people who are like, oh, I only play playtest because it was better for these reasons that I, I've come up with. <laughs> so, included. what you're saying is basically that early access has transcended video games. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is 100%. <laughs> what's, what's on top of it, actually, is it doesn't sound My like... My God, it's unstoppable. <laughs> like, if you buy a Pathfinder playtest rulebook... It's 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 almost worse than early access in a way because you all you get is that when they come out with second edition you still have to go and buy second edition yeah your it's, purchase it's of a yeah four hundred page rule book like this is no small this isn't like a like a brochure or something like that or like or yeah. the instructions on how to play uh, shoots and ladders you know it's a fold out like this They're is making a, you buy it twice my god early access is evolving even more. <laughs> So yeah, this or is, um, it's scheduled to come out, um, they're going to have it open for pre-orders between March 20th and May 1st, the books will be, um, and they're going to have the downloads, um, on their website starting August 2nd. So it's a little bit out still, um, probably, probably too far out for, uh, Dungeons and Doubloons season two which I've been doing a lot of thinking about. And I've been Ooh. talking a little bit about you guys, uh, with you guys, with um, uh, on Discord, in our mm -hmm. little secret section of Discord. But um, I think we should start that soon. I've got, a, I've got an idea, and I'm excited about it. I think we should start that soon. Don't we need more people? I think we need more people. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure that out soon. We'll figure it out. As soon as I'm not like Mike you know, and I can put on multiple voices, we'll be fine. You, I've never heard you guys put on voices. I guess like you have Darnell. I, oh come on, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Oh, you did the voice for that goblin. I guess that one time. So uh, that's a lie for Mike. I've definitely heard Mike put on voices. I don't know what a chisel voice would be. I'm a little bit yeah, scared. What does a chisel voice sound like? Give us uh, a chisel. Voice. Listen, listen to me make fun of people in chat. Uh, listen to me <laughs> talk about you guys when you're out there. Uh, I mean, just it is. I have I have a but big range of action. You're you're making fun of people in chat. Voice is just your voice with so much sarcasm, it becomes toxic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. He's usually a Here, British accent on top right of it, which is not really good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to. I didn't want to actually say that, since you know, the audience might not be okay with that. But yeah, now, now, now I got. It's now just what happens. It's not any way I think of any people. It's just, <laughs> just, just what happens. All right. Mm -hmm. Lol. All right. So it is just about time to wrap up this episode, but we do need to pick out an episode title. Uh, so go ahead and start dumping those in the chat chat room. We'll get uh, over to you guys in just a second once the delay has caught up. Um, I We have all sorts of stuff that could be a title for today's shizzle. Yeah. <laughs> beating out the beating out the uh, the stream to go ahead and uh, drop something in there. Telltale's Tom Clancy's The Division 2. Lol. Seven point shizzle. 7.5 hizzle. 7.5 hizzle. Board construct. 
I'll start making fun of you guys again. <laughs> Oculus, <laughs> Oculus bricked. That's actually pretty good. Oculus bricked. I had um, Oculus wrecked as one of the topic titles in the in the document. That's yeah. not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, but I I want I want one suggested by the chat room. Shiznet takes over Zencaster. Oh, Oculus Aww. wrecked OBS. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. Technical difficulties. What is? I don't. I don't understand seven point shizzle. What is that referencing? I don't. Know. Episode seven and a half. Maybe yeah. A shizzle face reveal. <laughs> <laughs> just troll everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's just oh what I need for more people to Google that oh shit. Oh my god, please. Oh. Shizzle <laughs> face reveal. Oh my god. Dungeons and Dragons Battle Royale. Seven and a half. Uh, I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Two guys in a JPEG. Two guys in a JPEG. <laughs> could be a, it could be a ping. Uh, is that like a new sitcom? Is no, it is, gonna, it is a JPEG. Are we pitching that to JPEG. Netflix next week? Like, <laughs> I, I really like two guys in a JPEG. What are, what are you guys one. thinking? What are you guys thinking? Uh, that's not bad. I think, yeah, two guys in a JPEG. I like it. <laughs> I like it. That's good. That's good. All right. All right. We're going to go with two guys in a JPEG. That's uh, That's too good not to go with. That's too good. All right, guys. That is going to wrap us up for today thank you guys so much for being here shizzle i'm gonna expand your jpeg what do you got going on did you just assume my file format <laughs> no it is it is a jpeg it's literally it's in okay, obs as shizzle.jpeg I, I thought maybe it was a png uh nope, jpeg all right i mean hi how's it going <laughs> <laughs> how's it going chat what are you guys oh. doing tonight oh, oh boy I don't wow. know what I'm doing that stream. I'm going to twitch.tv slash shizzle and playing Vermintide too, baby. Yeah. Yeah. We did we did manage to get a plug out of him. Cool. Yeah. We also follow me on the Twitter as well, because I mean I, I do post stuff there. It's mostly just my stream stuff, but you know. Yeah, Vermintide too, man. Gonna kill all the rats. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Mike, what do you got going on? Uh more Vermintide coming up. Uh should plug my stuff too, huh? AKA Mike B. Hey, follow me on Twitter because uh, because Twitter canceled my or disqualified me from the program that we that we talked about last oh, week. Oh yeah, yeah. Program. They they disqualified my account. Uh, have not given me a refund. They disqualified my account oh. because of that old ass tweet from 2016 of the album cover, and they said it was too sexual. And so like now they don't want they, they don't want it. Like I'm trying to get my money back. And so so yeah, follow me on uh, twittercom B because. I can't rely on Twitter to give me free subs. So, or, sorry, so, subs. so support the platform that is currently stealing Mike B's money. And I've been your host, Devilor. Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Devilor. I'm going to be playing some Vermintide. Everyone apparently is doing it, so I'm going to do some as well. Um, and obviously more GTA as well on the way. Mr. Legs McCready. Uh, and obviously uh, Internet Famous as well. Definitely check that out. woo -hoo. Thanks so much, everybody, for being here. Uh, what did we decide was the title? It was Two Guys and a JPEG. Yeah, two, that, two Hi, guys and a JPEG. This is, this is, my name is Shizzle. Thank you for watching, everybody. I'm sorry, Shizzle, I had to do this. Don't say the fucking man. Oh, shut up, shut up, Mike. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Subscribe to my channel. Twitch.tv slash Shizzle. I need all the subs. Seriously, I'm broke as fuck. I'm not even subbed to Lore right now because I'm so broke. Please, help me. I'm gonna go get my cup noodles now, because I, I haven't eaten and I just woke up. Please help me. That's all I got. <laughs>